Hi everyone, so for today, we'll be working on a solution for lap 6, which is World Cup. So for this problem set, what we need to do is to simulate the World Cup tournament and estimate the probability that any given team wins the tournament. To do so, we need to repeatedly simulate rounds between the 16 teams. So for example, we will pair the teams up and they will compete against each other, and the winner will move on to the next round to compete with the winner from the other pair, and so on and so forth until you get the overall winner. So how do we determine which team will win each round? So to help us derive the probability of each team winning, we are given a list of 16 teams along with their FIFA ratings that represents each team's skill sets. So for example, in the CSV file that we have, which is 2018M, it shows the FIFA ratings of the men's team. The higher the team's previous game results, the higher the FIFA rating. So our program will actually refer to this FIFA rating and estimate the probability of each team winning. So for example, if we load in the 2019 women's scores, the system should churn out the probability of each team winning. So before we move on, just want to say thank you to everyone for your support and for watching the videos. I'd greatly appreciate it if you can like and subscribe to my channel. That greatly helps to increase the probability of YouTube bumping this video up for other people who might be looking for this video as well. So moving on, let's look at the distribution code that we are given and what we need to work on. So by doing a quick scan, we can see that there are actually four sections. There is the main function followed by three functions which are simulate game, which pits two teams against each other and returns true if team 1 wins. Then we also have simulate round, which simulates a round and returns a list of winning teams. And lastly, simulate tournament, which will actually return the name of the overall winning team. So let's look at each in detail, starting from the main function. So for the main function, we will actually run 1000 simulations by default. Then the program will ensure correct usage, which means it will ensure that the user keys in the correct input. So that is, the user should key in tournament.py, followed by the CSV file that contains the FIFA ratings. So in the CS50 hints, we are actually told that we can use len, len, to determine the length of a string. Hence, if the argv key in does not equal to 2, that means that the user did not key in the correct number of line arguments, and the system will return an error. After that, there will be a dictionary called Teams and we will need to read Teams from file into memory where it will contain the name of each team and their respective rating. Then we will have Counts which is a dictionary that stores the names of each team and how many tournaments that they have won out of the n simulations that we will be running. Lastly, the system will then print each team's chances of winning according to the simulation. So next, let's look at the Simulate Game function. So this will actually pit two teams against each other and return true if Team 1 wins and false if otherwise, based on the probability shown here that takes into the account each of their ratings. So you can see that this function focuses on the winner of a particular game. So taking one step back, now we will look at the simulate round function. This will simulate each round between many different teams. So this means that if we have 8 teams, we will actually pair them up and run the simulate game function for each pair to get the winner. So at the end of this function, the function should return a list of winners for the round. So for example, if you have 8 teams and you run this function, you will end up with a list of 4 winning teams. So in this case, it will be teams 2, 3, 5, and 8. Let's take a closer look at how we simulate games for all pairs of the teams. So this is already given by the CS50 team, but I thought that it would be good for us to learn how this works. So taking the example where there are 8 teams, we will start with for i in range 0, len teams 2. So this means starting from 0, where the maximum i value is 7, we will increase i by 2 units for each round. So moving on, where i equals to 0, if simulate game teams 0, teams 1, remember that the simulate game function will return true if team 1 wins and false if otherwise. So if the system returns true, it means that teams 0, 1, Hence, when we want to append the winner of this round into the winners list, we will put winners.append teams0. Conversely, if the system returns false, it actually means that teams1 won, so we will actually put winners.append team1. So for the next round, since i will increase by 2 each time, i equals to 2 which means you will now be comparing teams2 against teams3. At the end of simulate round, you will then have a list of winners based on what you have appended at the end of the game between each pair. Next, moving on to the simulate tournament function, this should simulate the entire tournament and repeatedly simulate rounds until we have one winner. So as you can see, it is likely that we will need to use our simulate rounds function here. So now that we have a rough idea of what we are given and what we need to do, let's dive into it. 
We'll start with the first to-do in the main function, which is to read teams into memory from file. So we'll need to read the team data from the CSV file and add each team to the list called teams. So based on the CS50 hints, we can actually access the name of the file. Then with sys.argv1, we can have the file name equals to sys.argv1. Also, we are told that we can open this with the following, which is open file name. And with open file name as file, we can use csv.dictreader. So by default, all values read from the file will be strings. So this means that you must convert the teams rating to an integer. Then we will need to append each teams dictionary to teams. So the function called teams.append will actually append x to the list teams. So we'll do it as such. So let's put this in C. So you can see here what we're going to do is that we're going to use file name equals to sys.argv1. So the file name is what we have just keyed in. And we'll use what CS50 hints has given us. So with open file name as file. Then after that, we'll use the reader function. And after that, we are going to append what we have found by converting the rating into an integer. And that's that for this step. Next, we will work on the simulate tournament function where we want to simulate a tournament and return the name of the overall winning team. So we'll tap on the simulate round function which simulates a single round, accepting a list of teams as input and returning a list of all the winners for this particular round. So one assumption that we can make is that there is an even number of teams in the tournament. So all the teams here can actually be paired for all rounds and we do not need to worry about whether there's going to be any instances of whether there are teams who do not have another team to be paired with. So let's see how the simulate functions actually help us find the overall winner of the tournament. So taking the example where there are 16 teams, and we will actually apply the simulate round function once, you can see that we'll be given a list of 8 winners, which is a winner of each of the 8 pairs that we have here. Then we will actually simulate rounds again, and now we're actually left with 4 winners. And then after that we will do simulate rounds again, now we're left with 2 winners. And then we will run it one more time until we get the final winner. So notice that we will actually keep simulating rounds until we are left with one winner. So what does this mean? As long as the number of teams left is greater than one, we will keep on simulating rounds. So now we need to put this into code. So as per the CS50 hints, it states that recall that if x is a list, you can use len x to determine the length of the list. So what we can say is that as long as the number of teams is greater than 1, we will need to keep simulating rounds. So this means that we will stop this function when we are only left with one team, which is the overall winner. So we'll say while land teams is more than 1, so we'll just apply simulate rounds. At the end of every round, we will update the number of teams that we have based on the number of winners that we have. So now that the system has simulated rounds until we are left with the winning team, we can return the name of the winner. Since there's only one team left in this team dictionary, that means that the winning team is located in teams 0 because it's just the first item in the team dictionary. And we only want to return the name of this winning team. And remember, in our CSV file, the name of the team is actually stored under the first column, which is called team. So what we'll do is that we'll actually return teams 0, team. So let's put this in C. So as mentioned, while the number of teams inside the dictionary is more than one, we will just keep on simulating rounds and updating the system with the number of teams left at the end of each round until it becomes one. Right, then after that, we will actually return the name of the winning team. And that is how you simulate tournament. Next, we'll work on the last item, which is to simulate end tournaments and keep track of win counts. So we need to simulate the tournament n times. So taking the example of where n equals to 1000, this means we need to simulate 1,000 tournaments and we'll have 1,000 winners. We need to keep track of the number of winners and add one count to the team's each total wins. So for example, if Uruguay won 2 tournaments and Portugal won 3 tournaments, then your count's dictionary should be Uruguay 2 and Portugal 3. So as per the CS50 hints, you can use the in keyword in Python to check if a dictionary has a particular key already. So for example, by using the function if Portugal in counts, it will actually check if Portugal already exists in the counts dictionary. So if it actually exists, we will add 1 to its total score. And if it does not, we will start the ball rolling. Yeah, check the pun note. 
And if it does not, we'll start the ball rolling and put that its score equals to 1. So let's put this in C. So as mentioned, for i in range n, which means that we'll run n number of simulations, we will actually find a winner by simulating the tournament for the n number of teams that we have based on the CSV file. So if the winner exists inside the count dictionary, we will actually add 1 to its score, and if it does not, we will actually add this winner into the dictionary. Right, and yep, so let's save this and see what we get. And oh, I see an error, so I can see that I think there's a spelling mistake. Let me look for it. Spelled rating wrongly. Let me save again and let me try to run this again. And yep, there you go. So let's try the other file. And yep. So you can see this is a probability of each team winning. And that is the solution for running and tournaments. And yep, there you go. So that's the solution for lab 6 World Cup. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that you found the explanation helpful. If you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you liked the video and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. This greatly helps to bring this video up in terms of the YouTube ranking and make it more visible to others who might be looking for a walkthrough and for some guidance through this course. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.